Hey everyone, I haven't done an Emacs video in a while and I feel a little bit guilty, so let's talk about YAS snippets. YAS snippets is, as the name implies, a snippets package for Emacs. I think it would be apt to start with a demonstration of YAS snippets before I get into the details. So, if we're in Python mode and we type in the word class and hit tab, it expands a class definition with a bunch of fields that you can fill out. So in this case, the class name field, which is the first place the cursor goes to, is something that you can write into. Now, if I hit tab, it'll take me to the next field, which in this case is the class that I'm inheriting from. Tab again takes me to documentation. Who needs that? Tab again takes me to arguments. And this is the first place where YAS snippets can really, really shine. And that is, if I start typing the arguments, do you see that? The way the snippet is written is designed to make your life extremely easy. So now the most obvious thing that a lot of people do when they're writing Python classes, if you're not using a data class, is, you know, start with a list of arguments and then you have to like go in and laboriously add, you know, self.argument equals argument, self.argument2 equals argument. Yeah, snippet takes care of all of this. And the reason that this strength exists in the system is purely because Emacs is based on Elisp and you can embed Elisp directly into your snippets. So here's the basic example of a really powerful snippet. There's, of course, some more simpler ones in Python mode. For example, standard functions that you might want to override in a class, like equivalence, wrapper, etc. So there is a number of these snippets that are already present in Python mode. And, and almost all the modes that I've encountered come with their own set of snippets. Uh, note that to use YAS snippets, as far as I know, it's already installed in things like SpaceMax and DoomEmax. And I'm using Emacs 26, and it was already installed here. But I did have to enable it. So let's look at that. I'm going to go to my init.l. And all I had to do to enable it is to call this function in my init.l, YAS global mode 1. And here's a second bit that would be very useful going forward. I'm adding a minor mode hook for YAS snippets so that it activates an extra mode whenever it goes into a major mode that has YAS snippets enabled. So if I go to Python mode, it'll load the Python mode snippets, but then it will also load this uh, additional mode called fundamental mode. And this is a useful trick if you want to share snippets between different modes. So going back to this file that we were working on, I've already showed you that there is a there's a snippet for class and there's a snippet for wrapper. But what if I wanted to discover that? Well, you can do meta x and then you can do yes visit snippet file. And if you hit enter on that, you can sort of now browse through all of these various snippets that are already available to you. We can, of course, also go to one of these files. So if I select class and hit enter, we can now see what the structure of a yas snippet is. Most of this preamble you really don't need to know about. Uh, we'll go over that in a second, but it usually comes pre-filled whenever you're trying to make a new snippet. Down at line six is where the magic actually starts. So we start off with just adding some text, the word class. So then we get what kind of looks like a template or kind of like uh, variables in a bash function. So we just have the dollar sign and then number one means the first cursor position. Number two means the second cursor position. If you remember from when we were entering the snippet, you know, the cursor went to where dollar sign one was. And then after colon, there's the default value that will already be filled out so we have number one, class name, number two, object, number three, documentation, four. And this is kind of cool. You can refer to the first variable in this case. So when you're writing the documentation, you know, this default value already has your class name filled out. Then we come down to line 10 and we can see variable number four that shows up. On line 11, number one repeats again. And then there's number five without a default value which I actually didn't even see, but you can, you know, you can add additional parameters here. And line 12 then is the most interesting bit of the snippet where we're taking the value of four, which is our arguments. It is being passed into this function. The way to call a function in this case is to just use the colon and then use a dollar sign. And then you can just write a Lisp function. So in this case, we're calling the LPI snippet init assignments function and passing it this special variable called yas text. Yas text in this context is going to be whatever the value of four is. So now that we've seen the guts of a snippet, let's try to make our own. Now, as I mentioned, snippets are mode based. So if I do meta x and do yas new snippet, by default, there's going to be an assumption that you're writing a snippet for Python mode. You can change that when you're saving the snippet. All of this is based on files. But for now, let's assume that we're writing a Python one. Let's start off with a really simple one. I just want to make a snippet that adds my most used imports to a file. So I can give it a name, a distinctive name. The name doesn't have anything to do with what you type. What you need to type to activate the snippet, though, is the key. And for my personal snippets, I like to use forward slash. And then I can write out my imports. 
So let's say these are the three imports that I wanted. Now, if I go ahead and save this file, Yes Snippet is going to go to its default place to save these snippets, which by default goes to your home folder, .emacs.d, and then a folder called snippets. I actually keep this folder in my Dropbox, and then I symlink it into my .emacs.d, and that way my snippets can stay synced between uh, different machines. And then I also uh, put them in a Git repository. Now, as you can see, I already have a number of custom snippets that I've added here. Let's add this new one. It doesn't really matter what you name it. In this case, I'm going to keep the file name the same as the name of the snippet. Once I've added the snippet, yeah, snippet is also going to reload it. So now if I go back to the scratch buffer, which I have changed to Python mode, I can do forward slash imports. And voila, it expands all the text. So this was a basic example of a snippet where you just had predefined text and you just add that when you enter a key. You can also use it for fun stuff like adding a shrug. Now let's try to design a slightly more complex snippet. So my boss likes to add copyright notices to files. And I really dislike having to write the copyright notice myself or having to copy it and changing the fields. So we can make a useful snippet for that. So for the key, I'm just going to use CR. So this would be the basic snippet. Uh, right now, this is you know kind of stupid. It's just predefined text. But let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll come back and edit it. So let's make sure it works. It expands. For me, the author field is almost always going to be the same, so I don't really need to change it. I could potentially make it so that the default value is my name, and then if for whatever reason I'm adding a copyright to somebody else's file, I can change in their name. So then what we would do is we would say dollar sign one, and this is the first position, and then colon, and then the default value. All right, and now the cursor, as you see, lands on this first field, and I could change the name here. And then if I hit tab again, I come out of that snippet adding mode. Now, this is all nice. Uh, let us let me go ahead and actually save this file just so I can show the next trick. Now, this is great, but when I add the snippet, you know, I have the second field called file name. And of course, I could go ahead and enter the file name myself, but why do the work when we can make the machine do the work? So to do that, we need to use this function called buffer file name and pass it through this other function called file name non-directory. So now if I go back to my snippet, this file name here, it's not going to be a field that I enter. I want it to be fully automated. So the syntax that I was showing before where you pass the yes text uh, forward, we're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to use a different syntax where you just use these backticks in order to specify something that's supposed to be a Lisp command. Now, in this case, the command was file name non-directory. And to it, we were passing the result of another function called buffer file name. Let's check it out. <laughs> I made a mistake. File name non-directory. Did I make a spelling mistake? File name non-directory. Oh, yeah, OK. I have the dash in the wrong place. So let's go back. Symbols, function definition is void, buffer file name. And am I getting that name wrong as well? Yep. <laughs> I'm just having a terrible day with dashes. And voila. OK. So what's happened now is that we have automated the process of this snippet filling out relevant information. So in this case, that relevant information was the name of the file. Let's do the same thing for the year. So in Emacs, there's this function called format time string, where we can just give the format as percent %y, and that will give us the year. So let's use that. And I need to make sure that I'm getting the function right this time, format-time-string. I forgot to surround the function in backticks. All right, it looks the same as before because the year is 2020. But now we have the snippet set up. We have one field that we can modify. And then we have two fields that are automatically computed. So going with the theme of date and time, we can make a new snippet that just adds a date. Need to look up the format. Uh, yeah. Let's just say year, month, day. It's fine. When I go to save this, it's going to want to put it under Python mode. But this is a generally useful snippet. I want to be able to use it wherever I am and not be mode specific. In my case, if I go out of this folder, it's going to show me another folder for fundamental mode. If you don't have that, you can go ahead and add it. The little bit of configuration that I showed before that was shoehorning this fundamental mode into every mode where YAS snippet was enabled, that's going to help you access these shared snippets everywhere. I'll put that code in the description. So if I go to this folder called fundamental mode, you can see that I already have two snippets set up here, one for adding an epoch timestamp and one for adding that shrug that I was showing before. So now we can add another one just for adding date. And so now if I go back to this Python file and I do date, 
it expands out the date. If I change the mode to org mode and try to add a date, that works as well. It's going to work across all of your modes now. And so you can you can sort of start to centralize useful things like dates and epoch timestamps and copyright notices and emojis, all of that kind of stuff you can start putting in your snippets in the fundamental mode, and then they'll show up everywhere. Okay, so last but not least, let's see a very relatively straightforward example of how you can do additional computation of, on text that you're adding in a snippet. I'm just going to add kind of a throwaway snippet just to show the functionality. So let's say we have a snippet that has a single field, and then we want to pass that field onto a function. So in Elisp, there is a function for replacing text. It's replace regex in string. I'm just going to copy it over. And let's say we want to make sure that whatever is written here is always in snake case. If that's the case, then we want to make sure that spaces that people add are replaced with a uh, an underscore. And then the string in this case is just going to be yas text. Yas text, as I said, is a special variable that gets created whenever you use this kind of syntax. Additionally, we also want to make sure that all of this is always lowercase. So because this is Lisp, we can just wrap this function in another set of parens and call another function on it. The Elisp function for that is downcase. Let's go ahead and save this guy. And then usually when you're doing something like this is because you're writing something somewhere and you want it to be cloned somewhere else with some sort of a change made to it. So we'll pretend this is a situation where you're writing something in a comment and you want that to also become a variable name. And voila. Okay, so this has been a basic introduction to YAS snippets. I think this is the minimum that you need to know in order to get started with snippets, get started with using the ones that you already have, discovering the ones that are available, and then starting to write your own. It's a really liberating thing once you start experimenting with your own snippets, start adding some quality of life features. So I really recommend that you try it out. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, bye.